Is there a wild card that nobody's expecting that would um, advance self-driving quicker? Because most people seem to be thinking that, you know, the the steering wheel comes out in year 10. And, Mm -hmm. you know, to your point, like on highways, we might be able to get a little bit of our time back, you know, in you know, whatever it is, 2022, 2028, somewhere in that time frame, we'll be able to take our eyes off the road for a small amount of time or periods of time. But is there any technology that could be game changing either in chip technology or sensor technology that's in the work that people are looking at going, well, if that goes right, boy, that could be a game changer. Are there any game changers you can think of? So so the interesting sensor technology I'm looking at, and no one quite builds it, um, I've seen presentations, they all say 18 months away, which is like never. Yeah, that's the standard and technology. That is, yeah. yeah, and that is um, 5G. And it's not, and not using it for data transport. But one of the things that 5G has is it has a beam forming radar in it. Ah, so 5G at its high frequencies operates at the same frequencies as radar. Yeah. But instead of just being a single pulse that you send out in the scene, you can actually scan the scene by controlling the direction of the beam. Wow. And so what, what's interesting to me about that is first you could make a high resolution radar return, but based on solid state devices that are in every single phone. So wow. you get high quantity, high quality, you know, that'll drive the power down, drive the cost down. So you have those forces. So there's something there in, the, in you're going to have one side of it, the 5G people, you know, driving the cost on the antenna design, driving the cost on the DSPs or, or however you process the signals. Yeah. And that would be very interesting for us as a really, call it unintelligent collision avoider. Right. In that it doesn't have to understand anything. All it has to do is say, I want to avoid frontal collisions. And you could build a very, very simple system that would prevent all forward collisions. I think that would be a very interesting advance. Why doesn't that exist as a standard safety technology that every car is required to have, you know, under 35 miles an hour, slam on the brakes if you're going to hit something within five feet of you, period. Like, shouldn't that be much easier than self-driving to create as a, you know, airbag type, you know, stepping stone along the way and just get rid of every single fender bender and then retrofit every old car? Like that could be a, a $300 product for you that insurance companies would pay for and say, you know what, no more fender benders. Technology in the auto industry evolved very slowly. <laughs> I think that's what it comes down to. It's like, it already has to be proven. And some of that is because when you, when you build something into a car, as mm. opposed to adding it on, cars have like a 20-year lifetime. Right. And so that's often why technology in the auto industry tends to lag the consumer industry by five to seven years. Because it takes a bunch of extra time to prove that some piece of electronics is going to last 20 years into the future. And so I, I think it, it's something that they'll probably, it'll, yeah. it probably will that be seems introduced to be into like cars. The ultimate, but yeah. That'd be the ultimate aftermarket thing. Just no fender benders. You put this device like, a, you know, those in, de- those in grill radar detectors you can get aftermarket, like an in grill device that just slams on the brakes. If there's something right in front of it, you just solve that one acute problem. That's got to be half of all accidents are tiny 35 mile an hour or less fender benders, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, 